Hey, welcome back to the channel. Do you have a Nintendo GameCube and you wish you could play some of the cool games that never made it to the United States? Or you want to play your original copies of your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advanced on a Game Boy Player, but you know that the startup disc has just gotten to become unrealistic as far as price. Well, in today's video, we're going to look at a Xeno chip and how to install it. And we're going to see that sometimes these mod chips could be used for good and not just playing bootlegs. So if you stick around, we'll show you how to get it done. All right, on the bench today, we have a GameCube. And this is gonna be kind of a two-parter. Um, we're gonna do quite a few mods to this guy. The first mod we're gonna do is to install a Xeno chip. I'm assuming it's Xeno, X-E-N-O chip. Um, and while this is a chip that allows bootlegs to play, you need to understand that I don't condone bootleg or piracy in any way, shape, or form. But there are a few occasions where it's almost needed to preserve systems. Um, not to mention, whenever it's a system like this that's unsupported and has been basically a dead system for a very long time, the collector market can get a little on the crazy side. And I know personally, there's games that I just want to play. Um, I, I, I am a collector. I have a lot of hard copies of games I really want, especially Zelda titles. But more to the point, the GameCube was a great way to play um, your Game Boy games. As a matter of fact, this one has a Game Boy player stuck on the bottom. Now... This Game Boy Player, quite literally $10 to $12 by itself. The problem is, is there was a boot disk, the original one, to make this work with the system. So it's not just a hardware solution, it was software and hardware. The problem is now, a lot of those disks got destroyed, and the disk by itself currently sells for about $200, just by itself. Um, and there's a significant amount more of the bases than discs. And of course, you can't have the Japanese one. Um, but if you have a chip like this in your system, you can use the Japanese boot disc to run it, which is an inexpensive. It's still OEM, but it's inexpensive, you know, because these were region locked. The other side of it is that you can use something like Swiss, <clears throat> which will load unsigned code, and there are homebrew solutions to turn this base on. Um, and to be 100% honest, the homebrew community fixed a couple issues that the original OEM software had. Um, anybody that's into the GameCube scene that likes the player knows that the original software runs the games at the wrong speed. And of course, for the hardcore collector, you can't have it wrong, even if it is only four or 6%. I, I forget the exact number, but the clock speed is wrong. The homebrew com community actually fixed that. The second thing is, is when you play the Game Boy Player, uh, there's a small window, even if you have a large TV, it's a small window inside the TV. And the homebrew community, they made it so you can scale it up and down and stretch it and do all kinds of things with it. So. There are reasons to run this. Uh, the other reasons are to run Japanese games or PAL-based games if you're in the United States. And they are still the OE games. You're not bootlegging or pirating. You're just unlocking the system to allow it to do more. So that's the only reason why I'm showing it in this case. Sometimes all these are for is running unsigned code and running bootlegs. So this particular one's a pretty easy install. And uh, first thing we need to do is get this base off, but it looks like our screws are already loose. Um, you don't necessarily have to tighten them up if they're sitting on a shelf. And of course, the Game Boy Player just snapped into one of the data ports. We'll put that aside for a second. 
And we don't need these other covers off, although, <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave that one on. <laughs> um, this uses game bits down inside. Uh, it's the larger, whatever it is, 4.3 millimeter, I believe. And there's only four screws. And uh, of course you've seen me take these game cubes apart where I said, they could have probably cut the price of this system down by about 20% um, if they had just left some of the hardware out. And uh, you'll see what I mean in a moment. And this GameCube's in remarkably clean condition. Um, this is obviously somebody had taken care of it. Uh, normally it's all beat up and scratched. And honestly, the only scuffs I see are on the little window on the front on the uh, drive door. So there's only four screws holding the top to the bottom. But now I believe there's, I, we counted before there was 18 or, you know, 20 just to get in to the next section. Now this chip works by uh, bypassing the security on the drive. So the back just kind of comes off, the front just kind of comes off and we can just let it hang for now. And we got to take out all the screws the whole way around and then the four little ones in the front. All right, with all that out, we can now lift our drive assembly off. And for now, we're just gonna set this aside. All right, this is all we need to do this mod. And I'm just gonna put a paper towel down just so we don't get anything on our laser. All right, so from here, we've got a few more small screws that we need out. And I believe even though they're a very small head, it's still just a number one Phillips um, going down to like a single lot is too small. And the tin's out of the way. Okay, so this is where we need to be to put the mod chip in. And the nice thing about this chip is it's set up to be an easy solder board. Um, and honestly, anybody with a fine tip soldering iron, which, yeah, we have a curved fine tip on it right now. Um, and a little bit of good flux and good solder should be able to do in their home shop. You know what? I'm going to get the microscope out and because uh, you're going to want a closer look at this and I'll be right back. All right, we got the microscope out and set up. And um, before we get started, I just want to show you on the board. So, you know, once the tins are off and your optical drives out, you'll see this pad here. Uh, it's, it's unpopulated and it's, it's raw copper still. I believe this is where they probably, uh, you know, flash the, the region into the bias chip. Um, that's the only reason why I could think that they would leave that raw specifically. Otherwise, whenever they did the mask on the board, you know, they'd wind up having little solder points. So our chip sits pretty easy. Um, there's a couple cutouts. There's a circle here, as you can see in this notch and more or less it's going to notch in on this capacitor and this capacitor kind of like that so let's find it under the microscope where are we at where are we at there we are okay so now we're in a little closer than i wanted but that's fine so the uh, the chip as you can see, as we start to get it lined up, 
we're going to want to solder to those two pads. Let's see. That's pretty good. So these two balls, this um, contact, this contact, that solder point, this contact. And all of them look like they should be pretty easy to do. Although that one in that window, we just gotta be careful not to solder down to that other contact. So it's gonna sit just like that. And I'm gonna get a piece of capped on tape to hold us in place. Put a little piece here just because I knew that we were probably gonna need it. I'm just gonna put it across the board for a sec. And let's see. Probably about like that. Should do it. I think that lines us up with everything. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I think we're going to stay right there with it. All right, so like I've said a bunch of times, Flux is our friend. And I want to clean the tip of this off because it's burnt and nasty. By the way, if you buy the Amtec Flux, uh, you know, 10 milliliters, even in a shop that's running almost every day, you know, this lasts four or five months, six months without even trying. So in the home shop, this is going to last you a very long time. All right, we're just going to put a drop of flux there. Drop of flux there. Drop of flux down in there. Drop of flux down in there. All right. Now I have my iron set to 390 because we've got Leaded solder. Just gonna clean the tip a bit. Best way to clean it is put some fresh solder on it and scrape it back off. Let's see if we can do this without causing any problems. That one looks pretty good. This is the only one I'm worried about. Since it's on both sides. I want to solder to the wrong one. I believe that got it. I'll take a closer look under the loop. Looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna take a closer inspection and I'll be right back. All right, everything looks good. Um, sometimes using a jeweler's loop is just quicker and easier, especially when you need to get down into an angle. Uh, my microscope is very inexpensive. It does the job, especially when you're doing something like an HDMI port that's large and you're kind of sitting in one spot for a while. Um, but for a quick inspection to hold it sideways and refocus it, I found uh, a jeweler's loop is the quickest. All right, so we can give this a little test, I guess. Um, let's see how much we gotta put together. I don't even think we need to put that tin on. Now, there are a couple lights on this. Uh, one is green, one is red. And uh, the red is the power, the green is 
the confirmation after it uh, boots. So we should be able to just plug this in before we button it all up. There we go. And we can just set it like that. And we can grab some power and some video. And that looks like a GameCube and that looks like a Nintendo plug. <clears throat> and we can change our input to composite. And we can grab a controller. And cross our fingers. <laughs> See what happens. Well, there's a very bright red light here blinking. Um, it's probably hard to see. Let me hold this. Uh, you can see down inside there's a red light glowing away. All right, so let's start with an actual game. Just make sure we're still reading games correctly. All right, well, we're still reading. Honest games. So the owner supplied this disc, which is a, a burn CD. Uh, we'll hit our reset button. And oops, I believe this has Swiss on it. Now, normally, a GameCube would not read this. So let's go up to gameplay and see what happens. And there it goes. So, while I can't see the green light, it's obviously uh, it's obviously doing its job and Swiss loaded. So, the nice thing, like I said before, uh, Swiss will allow us to um, boot homebrew games, which will allow you to use an inexpensive Game Boy player, wherever it got off to, this guy here. It'll allow you to use this without having to buy a $200 boot disc. And, you know, like I said, sometimes there's reasons to mod a system because guess what? Nintendo's not gonna re-release that disc for, well, I think the entire system was $49.99 when the GameCube was out. So, anyway, there's our mod. Obviously, you don't need to see me put this back together. And um, we're going to do another mod on this one, uh, probably while it's apart. Uh, we're going to do a, an HDMI mod, but I got to dig into that one because it looks like there's a lot of wires involved. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. And if you did, give us a thumbs up. It does help. And if you have to give us a thumbs down, you know, make a comment down below. Let me know what I'm doing. Maybe I can improve on my content. Also, hit the subscribe button for us. And I appreciate you being here, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.